Hello everyone, I'm Tamara Banks. Mitch, so great to see you again. Good to see you, Tamara. We have some pretty amazing guests. I'm so pleased to have them here. First, uh, Jane Hansbury and Eric Dalmore. Hello. Welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you. I want to hear a little bit more about um, what Think360 is. It's sure. a really cool name. It is, oh, I like it too. <laughs> Thank you. Mitch, thanks for having us. Tamara, thanks, and Eric, it's great to be with you as always. We believe the arts are essential for a full education. That's what Think360 Arts is based in. We go, we go further though, you know? The arts are essential for a full life, mm -hmm. right? Because we believe that the arts give everybody, not just youth, but adults, skills for life, mm -hmm. you know? So really what we are about is make sure the arts are in our schools, in our programs with youth, in the diversion programs, recreation districts, et cetera. So, um, just a little bit more on the ground of what we do. We bring teaching artists like Eric Dallimore to K-12 schools, to libraries, to recreation centers, and then this incredibly special program with which we partner with the district attorney's office in the city and county of Denver. That sounds like a great partnership. Uh, Mitch, you must really enjoy having a place for these young people to, to kind of try to get back on their feet. Well, we have a whole diversion program, and what we do is a, probably close to a quarter of the kids in Denver that we could charge mm -hmm. with felonies or misdemeanors, mm -hmm. we put in our juvenile diversion program. And sometimes we can have as many as up to 200 kids where we file about, I don't know, a thousand, 1,200 cases a year on juveniles, and instead of filing on them, they agree to go into our program, and a big part of our program is teaching them the life skills and the types of things about staying in school, getting a GED, that type of thing, that will help them stay out of the criminal justice system. And a big part of that is they've usually committed crimes where they have destroyed property, where they have stolen cars, where they have done the kind of thing where they owe a victim restitution. And to try to get a 14-year-old to be able to pay off restitution, it's nearly impossible. We have two ways of doing it. We can put them to work, and then we have money from the state that goes to the victims for the hours that they put in. And some of them choose to do that. But we also have this program where they actually create art. They learn from artists and they then we sell those. So we may have a table in the web building when they do arts and crafts that are made by people that work for the city of Denver. We'll have our table where everything is laid out and they're actually selling the art. But I think the that's incredibly important. And if the victims weren't getting their money back, we wouldn't be able to do this. Right. But their interaction with these artists gives them a sense of something that they've accomplished. It gives them a sense, some of these kids, you know, they really don't have a lot of confidence. And they're gonna grow up in families where they're, they're, they're people that don't have any self-confidence. And to be able to accomplish something, to learn how to make something, it really has an impact for the overall effect that we want to have on getting through our system, getting through our program. And I got to say, we have an incredibly good rate of kids getting through our system, our program, if they work with an artist. If they do this part of it, then uh, they, our success rate is really good. It's good for the overall program. But when they get the experience to work with creative people that can teach them how to use their hands, how to create things, and how to pay back what they owe, it's a whole lot of life lessons all in one. Absolutely. So, Jane, we're dealing with kids who are in trouble and, as Mitch said, maybe don't have a whole lot of self-confidence, maybe some other issues going on at home. How are the different ways that you connect the kids with the artists and how that kind of evolves? Right. So the artists come and do a real residency through the program. So it could be that the artist is there once a week for eight weeks. Uh, a shorter residency could happen as well. But what we do is we work with the artists, and Eric is right here. We work with the artist to come up with doable, elegant, wonderful art that the kids can make. Mm -hmm. So I'd really like to ask 
Eric to tell us a little bit about the screen printing that you've done in the program. Is that Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is that all right? That's yeah, great. Yeah. Please I think tell us how, how let's, then let's the artiste from, actually right. works with these <laughs> there you go. fresh little minds that uh, need to be guided and put on the, on the right track. Sure, yeah. Um, so in the program, I'm working for anywhere from 10 years old to 18 years old, um, a group of about maybe 10 to 15 students at a time. And then I'm there two days a week on Monday and Wednesdays and for about three hours uh, in the evening. Um, it does create a sense of community within these kids. As Mitch was saying, some of these kids don't have the ability to really um, be confident in themselves. Mm -hmm. But then when a young 10 year old is sitting there and then the older cool guy who's 17 walks over and says, hey, nice drawing, like that looks great. These kids kind of bond together through this mm -hmm. program and that's something that was unexpected. Um, and then um, you also asked Jane about how do we get to do more than just teach, teach them art. Uh, there's also a little bit of a mentorship there too. So, you know, when I come in, they kind of, you know, the word artist sometimes can have this tagline of like being, you know, cool or, you know, I don't know, creative yeah. and fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Total lie, but <laughs> these kids kind of look at you like the cool uncle. You know, you're not the dad, you're not the parent. I'm not their, you know, parole officer if they have one. I'm not their, their teacher. I am their artist that they get to talk to. So we can kind of open up about little things going on in their lives, how they're doing in school during the day. And that's all through, um, throughout the classes we're making art, so. And, yeah. and what types of art are they doing? What do they, is it painting, sculpture? They do all kinds of art. They um, work through photography, painting, sculpture. Um, for my class, we did printmaking. Um, I thought that'd be very appropriate for these students to um, create prints. And we got to work with Indie Inc., which is a local organization down on South Broadway. And so it was able to show these kids like some real life skills, taking this soap screening and showing them that they can create t-shirts, they can create um, works of art they can sell. So, you know, kind of taking that creativity that they have and then you know, harnessing it into something usable. And so I imagine a lot is revealed um, through art in terms of kids being finally able to express themselves in a positive way. Anything that has surprised you in some of the things that you've seen in, in the artwork with the young people? I've been really surprised, Tamara, by some of the things that some of the younger kids have done that have been so poignant about pain, mm -hmm. about pain in their lives, um, and so honest. And what Eric said is absolutely true in terms of the cohort that develops and the camaraderie. And I often will bring people by who are interested in our organization overall to this program in particular because it is a wonderful vibe when you walk in. And you are like the wonderful aunts and uncles the artists are. You are those people who are an interesting person in these kids' lives who are teaching them something that is real. They're going to get something here. They're going to have a product at the end of the day. So whether it's printmaking, ceramics, beautiful fused glass. One of our artists, Nicole Banowitz, does incredible fused glass with the students. Hmm. And the stuff is just dynamite. I mean, I have a piece that I bought that people are like, where did you get that? I'm like, let me tell you this story. You know, <laughs> right. let me tell you where I got this. So there's so many um, ancillary benefits that I don't think any of us could have even known mm -hmm. when we when you know we started to work together with the program and the life skills the focus the concentration the perseverance the finishing something and also the realization that I made a mistake it's okay we've got more paper we've got more glass we've got more clay we're gonna keep working together and so um, it's quite, it's quite a wonderful program. I mean, if you could just sort of bottle the essence of it. Mm -hmm. And the cohort and the, I remember there was one boy once who was probably somewhere on the autism spectrum when I had come by and some of the students knew who I was and they said, hey miss, he's okay. You know, he's okay, it's just, and I said, thanks, I get it. You know, because he was a little bit, um, a little bit uh, out front. Sure. And they just said, miss, he's okay. I said, yeah, get it. So there's this nice feeling in the group that mm -hmm. gets created, and it's because, it's because Mitch and his team have created this opportunity, this space for this to happen. And it's because Eric and his fellow artists come in and do what they do, and the kids are right there with them. Well, Mitch, who knew that the <laughs> DA's office would have such a, an affinity for, for artwork and a connection Well, you there? know, I, I can't take credit for this, obviously. Bill Ritter started this program. They used to make pens. So they would woodwork and make pens out of wood. We've expanded it. And the partnership that Jane has brought to our program has just, I'll tell you, I go over there every now and then because it's just fun. 
Yeah. I mean, these kids are having fun, and that's what kids should do. They shouldn't be sitting in front of a probation officer. They shouldn't be in court. They learn so much more when, and it's, again, it's not violent criminals. We're talking about the appropriate kids, but they are a mix of ages. And you do sit and watch what they're doing. And we've had kids in the program that they, they're not comfortable doing the art, but they're over when we have a sale and that's one thing Jane's been great about, mm -hmm. is giving us opportunities to get this artwork out in the public and get it sold. The glass pieces. I, I remember a breakfast where one of the two women were kind of, you know, who's going to get this piece? <laughs> you know, and and you know, it was almost like we should have put it up for auction, but we actually really had two, so we were able to supply the second <laughs> one. The other thing is they get to interact with people that aren't part of the system. These aren't cops. Mm -hmm. These are these are people. These aren't DAs. These are people that that have lives that they think about or they maybe have never thought about, and it gives them an opportunity. Jane always invites us down to her breakfast once a year, and I try to get as many kids as we can get around the table there. Sometimes it's hard to get them there as early as breakfast. Right. But I got up and spoke one day, and I mentioned and introduced the kids. And based on that, one of those young men asked if he could go to our courtrooms to classrooms program wow. where he could talk up to fourth graders about his experiences of mm -hmm. getting in trouble and what that was like. Mm -hmm. And he said the very reason was is because he was invited to their breakfast and because I had singled him out and mentioned how important this was to them succeeding. And so he was willing to give back to younger kids. So, you know, Denver's one of those places where we partner, we partner with great folks, mm -hmm. and we get, get great results because of that. You mentioned these aren't kids who are doing violent crimes, but the crimes that they are doing, if not, uh, if there's no intervention, they could lead to, to violent crimes. These are kids that are going to be right in the middle of the thick of juvenile court. Mm -hmm. They have committed felony level offenses. Maybe it's a theft. Maybe they've done that much damage to somebody's house. They've stolen a car and done damage. So these are felony offenses, a lot of them. Right. Some of them aren't felonies, but they're first-time offenders that are willing to come into this program, willing to admit what they did, and be held accountable for that. But our hope is they get so much more out of it than they would be meeting with a probation officer. The biggest part of our issue with our counselors, with our officers that work with them, is keeping them in school and mm -hmm. making sure the schools don't give up on these kids. Because, and that's the biggest fight we have. You know, don't warehouse these kids in some classroom. Yeah. You know, we want these kids to succeed. And my counselors are oftentimes almost battling with Denver Public Schools to keep these kids in school. We have a tutorer. You know, when, when does this DA hire a tutor? <laughs> well, I have a tutor on staff who comes in and tutors these kids hmm. to get them through a GED program. And we've had nine last year that got their GEDs out of our program. And now we're looking to try to get somebody that's more a middle school type tutor who can help them catch up and keep up right. with the grade level they need to get to. But it might just be something like making a piece of art that then encourages them enough to take those chances to then start to do well in school. Right. And that's why, you know, this program is just, you know, it, 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 we were kind of at a dead end until Think 360's art stepped in and really saved this part of our program. Right. This, Mitch, we were talking about um, venues and where people can, can see this work. Well, there's two places. We have a website, which is really a, uh, a store where people can go on and they can look at the different pieces. It took a lot of time. It's got a really unique design by Josh Thurman in my office, Baruki who helped him, another person that works in my office. Uh, it has the prices and his pictures. But we also like to go out into the community. And Jane set up something for us that we've never had a chance to do. First Friday in October. So people watching the show, if you're after the first Friday in October, this will not apply. But anybody watching the show in the first week of this show running needs to come down on first Friday because we had a gallery donated to us for that evening to show off our kids' art. 
and hopefully sell an awful lot of it so the victims of those crimes get paid back that much sooner. Right. So I just want to thank Jane for setting that up. I want to thank the gallery owner who donated that evening to us because I imagine he could be showing <laughs> more influential artists than, than our diversion kids, but he's taken the time to, to let us do that. And so anybody that wants to come down on first Friday in October, down on Santa Fe, we're going to be down there with our kids. What a great opportunity. And I think of all the fun artwork that, that the kids get a chance to do. And one of the things I would love to do someday is murals. Mm -hmm. I think that would be just a great pro. And you have a whole program centered around murals. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, there's a lot of different um, local artists who are creating murals and then working with students to uh, create these murals. So, I mean, think about, again, about what kid wouldn't want to create a gigantic work of art on the side of a building <laughs> that stands 20 feet tall and 100 feet long. And so a uh, lead artist usually comes in and creates drawings with the students, and the students get to create their own drawings. And then the artist will help them refine it. And then they'll go in, and then they'll paint the entire mural um, live on site. Usually takes anywhere from two to four days to paint the mural. They'll involve community members, parents, and they usually involve like a, a photography aspect of it as well, which is where I, I usually work in. I'll come down with the kids and usually bring in three or four students and then show them how to use their cameras and photograph the whole project and document it. And wow. so that, you know, it's not all kids are painters. Some are, you know, better with their hands. Some are better with their, with their eyes, like I am. Um, so they will come down and will get to, you know, really learn how to use a camera, learn how to tell a story compositionally, and, you know, document the entire process, which then is something that um, other people in the community can see. You know, if you can't come down there on those three or four days that we're working, you're not going to be able to see the process. But if you do a good job of documenting the project, mm -hmm. then it's, you know, it's a lasting legacy where you get to see these kids smiling. You get to see them you know, in the hot sun, sweating a little bit and laughing and having a good time painting and, you know, they just love it, so. It seems like it would build their confidence and just something to be proud of, something that they can show that has been um, held in great esteem versus some of the other things that they, they may have done. Right, and Tamara, some of them are in trouble for graffiti. Mm -hmm. So for painting someone's garage or someone's fence or a building. And so to see this whole this is the way you do it, and this is how hard it is to do it right. And if you have a talent that way, you actually maybe have a profession, but you know, you've got to do it this way, and you know, they get the respect then right. for what this really means and how you don't do this to somebody else's property exactly. unless somebody's paying you to do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll get paid to do it. That's what, that's what we discuss in our program. I tell the kids, I said, you might be in here for graffiti. I don't know why you're in here. But, you know, I bring up guys like Jolt and uh, Diego Rodriguez Warner over mm -hmm. at the Gorilla Garden. Mm -hmm. And I say, instead of, you know, maybe getting in trouble and then you wind up in class with me twice a week, you could be getting paid, you know, five hundred to fifty thousand dollars, you know, to create a mural and get a grant and, you know, continue to do this as a work of art. So. Right. Yeah. Right. So people are clamoring or they should be when they see the artwork to buy it. Where does the money go then? The money comes, we have somebody from our staff. The kids are there selling it, but we have their, their person that's assigned to them. Or you will usually have more of our staff there than kids when the sales are taking place. Receipts, everything is taken, and it goes directly to our victims. When the kids work, say at the People's Fair, and clean up, those kind of things, they get about $11 an hour. Mm -hmm. It goes directly to their victims. So the kids don't ever get the money, but they get to do the receipts. They get to kind of do the business side of mm -hmm. things. But we make sure that the money goes to the victims. In fact, we had an investigative reporter at one point that was looking into our program. And we balanced the books, and you know he thought he had a big story. And I think we ended up being $7 off. And we made sure the victim got that $7. So, I mean, this is a program that's been tested and tried. Mm -hmm. and, and it really has been a big success. The other thing that we do is the kids make coasters. That is These so are beautiful. coasters that they make. We have some examples on the table. Yeah. Different agencies, the Denver Police Crime Lab, my office. I give one of these coasters to every new employee that comes into the Denver DA's office. Mm -hmm to protect our desks, mm -hmm. but also to kind of build the teamwork that we have. On the back we say what the kids, that this was done by the kids, the kids in the program, what happens with the money. Mm -hmm. This is for the Rose Andam Center. 
the Family Justice Center that the mayor and I and Cole Finnegan, we've done a show on it, right. are trying to build in Denver. And we buy these from the kids and we'll give them out in the public. Uh, a nonprofit buys them, not the DA's office, mm -hmm. and then supplies them to us so we can give them out. So it's another partnership that we have. I'm curious, Jane. Um, I mean, I look at the art, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, but there's a lot of work that goes into this working with the DA's office, working with the kids, working with the artists. You know, Eric's a sane artist. He's, you know, he's probably easy to work with, but not everybody <laughs> is. What motivates you to, to do this program and get involved with something like this oh. and work with the kids? What a sweet, thank you for asking that. Um, I had a great arts education as a kid, right? So I did, I went to public schools outside of Boston, I had a great arts education. And really, truly, um, and I'm, I'm not an artist, I'm married to an artist, visual artist. Um, I do play the guitar, I've started playing again after 20 years of being away from it. I'm terrible, <laughs> uh, let me, and I, nobody can be around, but I now have four guitars, including an electric guitar. So what motivates me? I love the arts. I love what they did for me as a kid, you know? I was a pretty smart kid, but I wasn't that into school. Mm -hmm. But I was so engaged when I got to be in my art classes and my music classes in an a cappella choir. So what motivates me as a person, just Jane Hansberry, the person, I want everybody to have creativity. I want everybody to have fun. I want us all to be in flow and have fun and be creative because I really kind of think, and I'm not a scientist, but I kind of think we're hardwired for it. Mm -hmm. I kind of think our brains are hardwired to be creative. We're creative animals, you know? So I really love that what I get to do every day is be, I'm sort of sitting in the middle of the program and the artist, the Yenta, right? <laughs> right? My team, we're the Yentas. <laughs> we're the Yentas who bring this together so we can have, especially these kids, have a chance to really feel good and to feel good about something of beauty and of utility that they got to make. So it's all about get, giving back. How can people watching this, who I am sure are <laughs> going to be motivated by you and your enthusiasm in art, help um, Think 360 Art? Oh, thanks. Pay attention. Pay attention to creativity. Pay attention, if you have children, what's going on in your kids' schools around the arts? Help the schools out. Figure out how you can help the schools out. Um, figure out programs like Mitch's programs. Uh, can we support these? Um, you know, I'd be disingenuous if I didn't say support us. You know, you can go to our website, think360arts.org, and right there on the home page is the donate button. And you can tell us exactly what kind of program you'd like to see us invest in. Take your money and invest in. Um, but I think what needs to happen is pay attention to how much we love our own creativity, and then that's just going to be an automatic, like, I want that for everybody. I want that for kids. I want that for people who are older, for our seniors, you know, to have, to be in flow and to be creative. So, you know, think360arts.org, um, come, you know, if you're seeing this before the event on October 4th, Friday, October 4th, the Santa Fe Arts District, right. come buy these beautiful pieces of art, because I think everybody in the city and county of Denver and the entire metro region is going to want them. So, um, We'll run out and get them and support <laughs> you. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks to both of you. Thanks for I'm going to go be creative and do something. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks so much for being here to uh, Jane Hansbury and Eric Dalimore from Think360 Arts for being uh, guests on Dialogue Denver DA. I'm Tamara Banks. We'll see you next time. Denver 8 TV. Your city, your source.